adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again. And I fell right at home, where I belong. I had that feeling coming over me again. Just like it happened so many times before. Welcome to another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. Join us today on a very interesting program about the Asian carp that has inundated all the tributaries in the Mississippi, the Missouri, the Ohio, and everywhere else. It's a fish that has caused a lot of problems, especially for our native fish. But there's an entrepreneur in East Peoria by the name of Roy Source who's taken the bull by the horns and is actually taking this fish to heights that it's never been to before. He has a market for the fish. He employs over 70 people and is doing a fine job. We're also going to go to Bath, Illinois, to the Redneck Fishing Tournament that's held every year on the Bath Shoot. And we're also going to go on the Illinois River and show you how these fishermen get these fish. And then we're also going to cook them. And by golly, they're pretty darn good. So stay tuned today for a good show. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway, Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily, Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis, on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance. At their new East Peoria location, next to the U.S. Post Office, on the corner at the bottom of Springfield Road Hill, our thanks to all of these sponsors. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We're at a very special place today. And I'm here with Roy Source, and of course, everybody knows Mr. Fish, Pat <laughs> Sullivan. I gave him that name many years ago, and he's lived up to it, and I'm really proud of him. But anyway, we're in a very special, neat place. Uh, the Asian carp, which has inundated all the waterways, uh, the Mississippi, the Illinois, the Ohio, and many, many others, uh, has become quite a uh, problem for uh, a lot of people, and especially our natural resources. But anyway, we've got a guy who is uh, trying to take uh, that nuisance fish and turn it into something that uh, will employ people and uh, feed people. And uh, Roy, tell us about what you have here. Sure, I appreciate that, Harry. Um, basically, we have our Source Freshwater Company that started out by forming a Midwest Fish Co-op. The co-op is a group of fishermen uh, that we brought together, uh, now numbering about 20, that bring our bring their fish or their catches off the Illinois River, specifically the Peoria Pool and surrounding area, into our facility. Uh, our facility then uses, utilizes those fish for processing in different methods. Once they bring their boat in here, we ice those fish down. We then take those fish and utilize part of them to make a mince type product for us, which you'll see a little bit later. And then also we ship these products on a, on a iced format in totes to other processors around the state. We're here to not just develop our business, but to enhance other businesses that are utilizing these Asian carp so that we can create a solution by creating jobs, helping the environment, and feeding people. And may I say your last name is Source. Source, that is correct. And give us a little history about the Source family. Sure, the Source family, uh, my father started this business 50 years ago. Um, he originally uh, was located in downtown Peoria and relocated to East Peoria about 40 years ago. Uh, we're, we were a food service 
distributor that services about eight states um, for different chain accounts. We provide them with fresh, frozen, and dry products to many different chain accounts and family businesses. Over the years, our company grew and developed. Um, my father passed away about three years ago. And from then, I decided that we need to take a transition and move to a different type of business. We saw this opportunity last year during the COVID situation. And I decided uh, about July, the end of July of last year, that we would exit the food service business and enter the Asian car realm. Now tell us, you've got a large facility here. It used to be something else. This was a food distribution point. Yes. And you have virtually taken it all under one roof, and this is for the fish process. Yes, we've actually done two things here. One of us are utilizing about 20,000 square feet for the fish processing side right now. We want to expand that as this business grows. We also utilize part of our facility for the area food banks to store their product and distribute food to people in need. So we're trying to multi-purposing our facility to help those in this area and the surrounding area. How many square feet is this building? The building is 65,000 square feet. That's big. <laughs> it's as big as my whole block. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and they, the fishermen literally come right off the Illinois River into his back door here. Well, he, you've really yeah. facilitated uh, yes. the people that work for you. You've got it covered from end to end. And when they're not fishing or they're home with their families, they park their boats in the back. You have a, a secure place for them to put their boats. Can you uh, tell us exactly how this all works? And let's say we've got the fish in the boat and we're backing up. Can you it's go a, from it's there? It's a fisherman's dream, really. Well, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do a thing other than catch. Exactly. All <laughs> Fishermen used to work about 14 and 16 hour days. Now they're working eight and 10 hour days, four days a week and they're making more money, in part because they're spending less money transporting their fish to other locations, and they don't have to go very far once, they do, once, they, once they've harvested those fish. It's a very difficult, labor-intensive type product to, re, to uh, harvest out of the Illinois River. It's a manual process. They use gill nets, and they pull these fish in, they put them in their boats, and if you fish for you know eight or ten hours in the river, then you have to drive four or five hours to unload your boat. This is what they look forward to. They come in here, they back their boat into our facility, and then they'll we'll unload the boat for them and put them in the totes where we ice them down. At the end of the day, they park their boats in the back of our facility where they're secured, and then they don't have to transport those boats to different locations where they might live. Yeah. Because not all the fishermen live in this area. But they have you have ice for them before they go out, they got ice. When they get back, they get ice. I mean, it, it's a process, a yeah. good yeah. process. How many ice do you go through? That's a curiosity, I'm sure many want. Sure. We go anywhere from 10 to 15,000 pounds of ice a day. A day. A day. <laughs> That's just for the fishermen. Then there's another five to 10,000 pounds we use in the processing side to ensure the quality of this product. A day. A day. That's a, day. a lot of ice. That's yeah. a lot of ice, yes. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> a ton of ice. Exactly. Fisherman's know, dream. Several tons of ice. You know, I'm with Pat here, and uh, Pat's quite the entrepreneur, as you know what he's done with the uh, warehouse district. A fabulous job, and I can't give him enough accolades for what he's done to make Peoria a beautiful place again. But he's taken that fish and served it to people down there. Yeah. What was the reaction to feeding the folks? People can't believe how good it tastes and how clean it is. And I keep telling them, it's a, it's a vegetarian. It's not a bottom feeder, it's a vegetarian. And so that's why it's so clean. It, it cleans itself and, and uh, it's easy to make because the way they process it, and, and we can get fillets, but right now we're, we're still dealing with the process and it is just easy to work with. You, you, uh, you can, put as many uh, uh, ingredients in there you want and, and get it to your own taste. These guys right here got to taste this yesterday. They tell them what you thought. It was very delicious. They're bad. Yes. yes. Very good, yeah. Very good. Uh, mild, not fishy. Mm -hmm. Well, he had the little round balls that he has no. a mixture. <laughs> I think he's got the mayonnaise in that. Those are really good. These are good too. These are called the sliders. It's a little different mixture. And you look here, it's like a hamburger, but not. 
you know, so. Like a fish burger. It's a fish burger. It's really quite good. And even people who don't like fish would like this probably, because it's not fishy at all. It's shocking how ugly carp are in the, in the river when you catch them, how much they stink, and how their meat is, which is one of the lightest, most white, flaky, white fish out there that you can buy. Pat just uh, brought out another uh, new recipe of his, and this is very, very beautiful, I'm telling you what, and very tasty and smells delicious. Tell us what we got here, Pat. Okay, again, we have uh, uh, some Old Bay seasoning, a little bit of garlic salt, onion powder, not garlic, garlic powder, onion powder. Uh -huh. I've used some uh, uh, Parmesan cheese in this, so uh, you'll see it inside and out. And, uh, and then we, uh, what we did with this, we uh, baked it, we seared it on one side, and then put it in the uh, salamander for uh, a good, like a broiler, and, and, uh, and we broiled it for uh, about seven minutes. Wow, and, um, I'm really excited about a, taking a bite yeah, out of it. Yeah, it's a nice well, patty there. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Well, we're going to give her a more, shot. It's more uh, dill sauce. Yeah, let's try it out. It's a very interesting fish. Um, like Pat was saying, this is, the, is a very clean white fish. It is the second healthiest fish you can eat because they are not a bottom feeding fish. They are a filter feeder. They are a vegetarian. Second to the salmon. Second only to wild caught salmon. Wild caught. Farm raised wild caught yeah. salmon. That's it. <laughs> well, what's the uh, stigmatism? And I have, you know, talked to a number of people who are trying to change the name, you know, as an Asian carp to something more palatable to our ears. So, but that has failed. They still want to call it categorized as an Asian carp, but right. there, is, there is a movement to call, give it a new name. There is a movement to give it a new name, but it's still Asian carp. Now, we have actually marketed underneath our label, which is the source uh, freshwater label, so we, we call it Sharuba. 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 <laughs> it yeah. means silver. Silver, yeah. Silver, so we're yeah. using that, and you still have to have the, the name of Asian carp on there, but it gives it a little different spin on the product. It's yeah. still the same product, but we provide it in a different format. We provide it in a mince format. It's a boneless type product that is very versatile. It has virtually no flavor to it unless you season it. We typically have about 100,000 pounds a day is what our average is. We have, we've had, uh, or 100,000 pounds a week, excuse me, about 20 to 5,000 pounds a day. We've had days of 80,000 pounds, but an average week is about 80, or about 100,000 pounds a week. 200,000 pounds is our largest week. But like I said, in a day, 25,000 pounds to 50,000 pounds a day. What's that come out to in millions? In millions of pounds, our original target was, we were shooting for about 5 million pounds a year to harvest in this program. We're actually thinking we're gonna do eight to 10 million pounds this year. Okay, so if you think uh, it's 2,000 pounds per ton, so how many tons is that? 50 tons. 50 tons, 50 of, fish. tons of fish. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> a lot of fish. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a lot. Hey, we're real lucky. Uh, Lance Gregerson from uh, Browning, Illinois is with me. He is one of the fishermen who uh, goes out and gets these fish. Tell everybody what time you got up this morning. Got up at 3.30 this morning. So here it is right around 4 o'clock, right? Getting close? And your day's not over yet? No, we got, still got to load ice up for tomorrow and head back down the road and get ready to go again in the morning. Where, where are you getting most of your fish close to the to here, right? I mean, yeah. you're you're not we're, we're fishing in you're fishing in Peoria Lake. Yeah. yeah. How many did you get today? Uh, 
Not really for sure, probably 6,500, 7,000, something like that. That's a lot of fish. That's a ton of fish. How long have you been doing it, Lance? Mm, roughly 40 years. So you're, you've been fishing, but you were fishing for, you know, catfish, buffalo, carp before, but it's all changed now because there's not a lot of buffalo there anymore, is there? There's still several buffalo around. We've caught a lot of buffalo this summer, and we don't really know why. Uh, I'm sure somebody does, but I don't know. I wish rabbits were as plentiful as fish. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you too. You ain't biting on that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, thanks, old buddy. Appreciate it. Good luck to you. You bet. Thanks. I want to thank Roy for the uh, great tour of this facility, and uh, we wish him the very best in the future. If, uh, they really know what they're doing here. And uh, if you ever thought that it was a stinky, no good fish, you, that's not the case. It's very, very good. It's processed cleanly, and it's, uh, I can't wait to eat some more of it. Pat, you're gonna be serving it soon. Soon, yep. So, as soon as we can get the IDNR to, to get us this new name and, and, and going, we'll probably be set up before they even do that. We don't have to wait for them, but we thought it was good to wait for them. But we're, we're ready to do something. Well, you're, because this is, this is huge for this whole, uh, river whole area and how many people do you employ counting the fishermen and your personnel inside? We currently employ about 70 people counting the fishermen and all wow. the deckhands. Wow, yes. so this has been a big boom for it, everyone. It has been a big boom, yes, because the fishermen, you know, they have deckhands and everything, so it's it's a good it's a good way to utilize your labor force and pay them a fair, um, honest wage for a hard, for a hard yeah. day's work. Yeah, I've been with them, as you've mm -hmm. seen in the show. Uh, with uh, Orion Briney. Yes. And uh, I was with him when we caught uh, 12 tons. Uh huh. And it was quite a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, it was. It was quite a day. Yes. Yeah. What's the name again? Source Freshwater, uh, Sharuba. Sharuba, yeah. Sharuba. And if you visit our website at sourcefreshwater.com. Source Freshwater.com. And what are we going to do today? We're going to go out and try to fill this boat full of fish. They told me these big head ones were good to eat. I took one back home. I didn't tell my buddies. I got bluegill, I got catfish, I got buffalo on the big head. And I, I uh, Take that scored off. that buffalo, that buffalo, I scored the big head, and I cut that big head, and I took the, like a blood vein off the side and, and flayed him up, and they cooked them all. Guess which fish they liked the best? The big head? The big head. Uh -huh. They liked it better than the bluegill. They liked it better than the catfish. They liked it better than the crappie. All right. I think this is the last, I played my last tune on my banjo fish. <laughs> yeah, you got to skin them, you can't, you can't fleece them, take the scales off, you can't scale them, you just got to skin them. Yeah. Yeah. And scale them. I know, I've eaten them, they're good to eat. They're like they're welding on them. They're great, great fish to eat. They're, they're a little bit bonier than a buffalo. Hey Ryan, I'm just sitting here wondering, I've just been watching this go so fast, what is your biggest uh, haul ever? Well last week we made a set up here Upper Peoria, we caught a little over 40,000 pounds of fish in one set. It took us three days to get them all out of the nets. There were so many in them. Looks like a salmon almost. Yeah, there. Now, is there any difference in eating this one they and the black? They said this one here tastes a lot stronger. They don't, they don't particularly yeah, want these. Uh, they want the black one. Yeah. These are not worth as much money as a black. Well, let me show everybody a, a white one and a black one, the difference between the two here. White one. See, it almost looks like salmon, Richard. Looks almost like a salmon. There's the white one. And then here's the black one. We'll grab a black one, lay them side by side. I see the black one has a lot bigger mouth too. Um. Yeah, bring them over here. Yeah, see? There's the difference. There's the white one, there's the black one, and this is the one they want, they want right here. They want the black one. Boy. If these fish get up there in Lake Michigan, they're in big trouble, aren't they? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Harry, could you imagine these in Lake Michigan? Oh, they're just devastated. Oh, big place like that, they really like that, wouldn't they? Be harder to catch there too, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Here, time just gotta, just gotta find them. Well, this show is gonna wake a lot of people up, Harry. Well, this is gonna get some attention. Yeah, they don't realize there's this much. They out have there. no idea. Yeah, this is like going across the hill in the backyard and looking over your fence and seeing 15 million buffalo, just like it was back, you know, when the settlers came here. There, there are millions of these, aren't there? Millions. Oh, yeah. Millions. This thing is this just unbelievable. unbelievable. This is just unbelievable. You want to become a commercial fisherman, Rick? You and I can go in business oh, I'll tomorrow. I'll tell you, I've, I've been How's out. How's your back? Hey, my back's not very good. Mine's gone. I don't need this. Hey, I'll tell you, I've been out on a cold day with these hey, guys. Hey, we can hire on as first yeah. mates with him. I think. I, I, I remember. Let me get in real quick. I'll just say everything. No, no, I no. Got. no. <laughs> oh, man. 
I'm gonna have to get rid of Harry so I can get him on the boat. This is one net, Ryan. This is yeah, one see net. The ribs on the boat. You just kept keep setting the, the board back, making the hole bigger, put the fish in. I'll be treading the water. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Bring Harry, you heard a catch and release. This is release and catch. <laughs> release the boat from the dock and let's go catch another ton of fish. Unbelievable. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Many guys and gals are cowboys at heart, and everybody likes to shoot a cowboy rifle. And today we have a few examples of some of those guns. We're going to start first with Trapdoor Springfields. This is an officer's model, and it's a current production. Then we have the rifle version, and then we have the cavalry model, which is just identical just about to what Custer had at the Little Bighorn. They shoot a 4570, they're a single shot. You put the hammer on half cock, you open the loading gate, you drop your round in, close it, cock it fully, and you're ready to go. And then we jump up into lever action rifles, and um, these are Uberti, and they're exact copies of Winchester 73s. This is a saddle ring carbine, this is a deluxe rifle, and then we Winchester started making them, they're made by Maruku, but they have the Winchester name, octagon barrel, and this is a full-size rifle. If you want something a little bigger, Winchester comes out with uh, limited edition models. This is a Winchester 1886. Right behind that is the famous Yellow Boy carbine. It's a Winchester 66 copy. It's made by Uberti. This is a copy of a Winchester 92 carbine. It's made by Rossi. This picture rifle is in a 44 Magnum. If you're a big John Wayne fan, they make the John Wayne rifle. This is a 4440, the large loop just like what he carried in most of his movies. And here's a nice example of some American-made rifles. These are made in New Jersey by the Henry Company. And if you want to do some long-range cowboy shooting, here's an example of a Sharps rifle. This is made by Shiloh Sharps. It's a 45 110 Probably the most common caliber in a Sharps these days is 4570. And uh, this particular rifle is a special order. It's got the shotgun butt plate, uh, high-grade wood, factory installed uh, peep sight, and a extra heavy barrel. I'm Dave Barth with your Sportsman's Tip of the Week. Good shooting. And now we're going to go to Bath, Illinois, one of my old stopping grounds. And for the last 15 years, they have the Redneck Fishing Tournament put on by Betty Ford, who lives in her in Bath. And uh, hey, they're not only good to eat, but they're fun to catch this way. Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We're here in Bath, Illinois, and uh, this is a quite an event. This is the uh, Redneck Fishing Tournament. So anyway, we're going to walk around and talk to a few of these folks.
understand you guys got second place. What's the secret to your success? Uh, staying in there. Even if uh, there's no fish, don't give up. Keep going. You get hurt, keep going. <laughs> what uh, What you guys do to get them in? Uh, we'll just drive to win. We want, we want to win, so. Well, you got to have the vibration of the motor. Is that what scares them? Uh, yes, they're, I guess they have the most. Uh, their nervous system is very uh, uh, sensitive. Yeah, sensitive, yes. Yeah, how many fish do you guys get? Uh, caught 88 this heat. Yesterday's total was 574. Wow. So. Oh, is there another one today? Yes, there'll be uh, four to six. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of work. Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. It's worth it. That's yeah, a young people. Where are you from? I'm from uh, New Haven, Illinois. New Haven, where's yep. that at? Uh, Southern, down south, uh, near, uh, it's west of Evansville, Indiana. It's cool enough Okay, here. you're over by Harrisburg. Yep, east of uh, Harrisburg. Yeah, my wife from down there. Oh, nice. Uh, David Mobley's my name and uh, team Carp Storm. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing this since uh, 2012. Well, good luck, congratulations, and hope you do well in the next heat. Thank you, sir, we appreciate it. Adventure Sports Outdoors is brought to you in part by Corsall Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products, buyers of standing timber in Smithfield, Central Pool Supply, everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Kelleher's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Eastport Marina, one of the only marinas in its class between Chicago and St. Louis on Mariner's Way in East Peoria. Goodwill, supporting our veterans with job placement assistance, health, housing, and resource referrals, and the General Wayne A. Downing Home for Veterans, all because you shop and donate. And by Lori Feld of Allstate Insurance at their new East Peoria location next to the U.S. Post Office on the corner at the bottom of Springfield Road Hill. Our thanks to all of these sponsors. Thanks for watching another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. If you get the opportunity to try to eat Asian carp, you'll be glad you did. It is delicious. I'm not going to tell you it tastes like halibut, but it looks like halibut, and it's pretty darn good. See you next month.